Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, three vehicle crash sends four people to the hospital overnight. Coming up, details on their conditions. Plus, President Biden doubling down on his decision to withdraw U.S. military personnel from Afghanistan. And outside with live cam, a wall of humidity this morning. It is very, <laughs> very muggy out there right now. We can just call it thick. You can see it hanging in the air. Good morning, everybody. Let's start out the month of September. Good morning. It's Wednesday the 1st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, we are starting September very humid, and we ended August pretty hot. We did. Um, so new month, Mike Osterhage is here and uh, kind of clues us into what's happening as far as the weather this morning. New month, same weather. Oh, mm. funny. Yeah, yesterday uh, we finished up at 98 degrees. So once again, the hottest would be fit 98 a couple of times otherwise in August yesterday. And we're going to be up there again today. So a couple of showers popped up, but I, I mean, I don't think anything was in our vicinity. A lot were up to the north. There may be one or two of them off to the east later on today. But overall, the theme is going to be hot. And yeah, like Mark said, there's a bunch of humidity out there. It's 80 right now, uh, mid upper 70s around much of the area, 81 Stinson and Canyon Lake. And these numbers yesterday, dew points we're down about about 70, even some upper 60s, 71, something like that. So it was a little bit more pleasant when you stepped outside. Nope, not today. 77 Port SA and Randolph, 78 a dew point temperature. That means a ton of more. It, it's a steam bath out there, a wall of humidity, like Mark described. That 85 is what it feels like right now. 89 is what it feels like right now when you walk out your door down there right around Stinson. Mold is on the high side and throughout the rest of today. Yeah, it is going to be very warm and very humid. We may drop another couple of degrees, partly cloudy to sometimes mostly cloudy skies. And then we are going to have mostly sunny skies going for 97 today. One or two of those showers off to the east. There are going to be a lot of upper 90s. There are going to be some triple digits out there and the heat index is really going to be high today. We do get a little bit of a break though in the humidity as we go in toward the weekend, but still pretty darn hot. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stuff, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a late night three vehicle crash on the northeast side. It sends a family of three and another man to the hospital. Happened just before 10 p.m. at the intersection of Walsham Road and Mesquite Farm. Police say a man was traveling too fast, ran a red light, crashed right into the pickup with the family inside. Another car was also involved in the crash. No one in that vehicle was hurt. The three family members in the pickup escaped with minor injuries. Please say the man who hit them is in serious condition and has a broken wrist. Turning now to the pandemic here at home, there is a decrease in hospitalizations. A little more than 1,300 COVID-19 patients are being treated in the hospital. 378 are in the intensive care unit and 237 are on ventilators. Bear County's COVID-19 positivity rate has dropped three points to 10.6% and some warning indicators are moving in the right direction. Let's be clear, there's still a brush fire out there and we wanna make sure that folks get vaccinated, that folks mask up, but really entering into the, another holiday. With Labor Day weekend coming up, local health officials say to take precautions when invited to large gatherings. Making headlines this morning, Texas now has one of the strictest abortion bans in the country. The controversial law took effect today after the U.S. Supreme Court declined to block it. Prevents women from getting abortions after six weeks of gestation. The law also allows citizens to sue anyone who helps a woman obtain an abortion. A rights groups see the law as a direct challenge to Roe v. Wade, the landmark decision legalizing abortion. It's unclear if the law will stay on the books or further legal action will stop it. The Supreme Court is poised to rule on a 15-week abortion ban in the state of Mississippi. Hundreds of thousands are dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. This morning, more than one million homes and businesses are still without power in Louisiana and Mississippi, including all of New Orleans. An estimated 25,000 plus utility workers are working to restore electricity, but officials say it could take weeks. New Orleans is planning to use 70 of its transit buses as cooling sites and will have drive through food, water and ice distribution locations set up today. This morning, President Joe Biden is firmly defending his decision to withdraw the United States from Afghanistan. CNN's Reed Binion has the latest. I was not going to extend this forever war. And I was not extending a forever exit. Nearly a day after the last American troops left Afghanistan, President Biden giving a fierce defense of his decision to end America's longest war, saying new threats are now the United States' priority. 
There's nothing China or Russia would rather have, would want more in this competition in the United States to be bogged down another decade in Afghanistan. The president committing to still help those who want to get out of Afghanistan, also addressing criticism that his administration could have avoided a crisis and a historic mass evacuation if they had only started getting people out sooner. I respectfully disagree. Imagine if we'd begun evacuations in June or July, bringing in thousands of American troops and evacuating more than 120,000 people in the middle of a civil war. There still would have been a rush to the airport. Now the Taliban is tightening its grip in Afghanistan, seizing American military equipment left behind. A Taliban spokesman saying, quote, the Americans failed here. They failed. From the military perspective, they failed to achieve their goals. But the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan wants to have good relations with the whole world on behalf of the nation. We want to have strong diplomatic relations with all, including the United States. I'm Reed Binion reporting. And time now is 436 and it's 80 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, how a small South Texas town is taking big steps to preserve their history and their future. Also up next, a preview of some high school football action as Judson gets ready to take on Lake Travis. Outside with live camp starting off the month of September. I mean, just look at that right now. The, there's so much humidity. It's almost a haze in the distance. We're trying to look back towards downtown. You're watching GMSA. The Jetson Rockets will continue their difficult non-district schedule this weekend when they travel to Austin face Lake Travis, who is ranked in the top 10 in the state in Class 6A. Comes after the Rockets, who are ranked second in 12's top 12, beat DeSoto 35-28. Rockets have had their season ended by the Cavaliers three seasons in a row in the playoffs. Lasted 2019 in the state quarterfinals at the Alamo Dome, where they lost 48-35. They're going to come in ready to play us. They're not going to lay down to us just because of last week. And we're going to come in, we're going to play our game just like we did last week. We know they're going to be ready for us. We're going to be ready for them. So all around, we've got to have another great team win. We're going to find out pretty quick who we are as a team. You know, what kind of mindset our kids have. You know, how they want to attack the season. Because, you know, if you don't go out there with the right mindset and make the right plays, you'll get embarrassed by the teams we play on our, on our preseason schedule. So we're looking forward to another challenge. This time we get to go on the road and see how we react at a, in a dim, different atmosphere. Kickoff in Austin Friday night is at 7.30 p.m. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys will only keep two quarterbacks on their 53-man roster for now. That's after they released both Garrett Gilbert and Ben DiNucci yesterday. That means Cooper Rush is Dak's backup for now, even though there are other quarterbacks available. Rush completed 29 of 46 in the preseason for 272 yards, two touchdowns, and most importantly, no interceptions. After a very successful first year winning seven games, Jeff Trailer is ready to begin his second season head coach at UTSA. When they travel to Illinois to take on the Fighting Illini, it's a very tough test to open the 21 season, especially when Illinois kicked off their season last Saturday by knocking off Nebraska 30 to 22. On Saturday, the Roadrunners will only be five and a half point underdogs. Kick off 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Not a good night for our missions. Those feisty Amarillo sod poodles are in town and they mean business. They took an early 5 0 lead. Missions would try to make a comeback with four runs in two big innings, but it was enough. Missions lose 9 4 to start the series. Game two tonight at 5 p.m., followed by a makeup game immediately following. And I have to credit our producer Hardy for clever writing. Yes, uh, they are feisty. Yes, they at are. At nine points. Yeah. Time now, 441 and 80 degrees. Still ahead, preserving a piece of history in a small South Texas town, how some Castroville residents are banding together. First, it was murder hornets. Now it's the spotted lantern fly. How this new pest is threatening agriculture crops and trees. And welcome back. It's 444. There is a new pest threatening agriculture crops and trees. It's the spotted lantern fly. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, move over, murder hornet, and say hello to the spotted lantern fly. If you see that, we want you to identify it and we want you to squish it. 
While they may look pretty, officials warn these pests are wreaking havoc on fruit crops, trees, and even lawn furniture up and down the East Coast. The quick-moving pests native to Asia and known for their pale pinkish-gray wings, black dots, and scarlet undercoat were first documented in Pennsylvania in 2014. While they aren't a threat to humans or pets, they feed off 70 types of plants and trees. In the four years since they first showed up at Vinecrest Vineyards and Winery in Pennsylvania, partner Sam Landis says they've caused hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. In terms of wine value, um, it's debilitating. So what should you do if you encounter a spotted lanternfly? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. It was 177 years ago today that Henri Castro brought a bunch of colonists from Alsace, France, to settle along the Medina River. And all these generations later, their descendants are now making a bold move. As Marilyn Moritz tells us, a group of families trying to preserve the heart of downtown Castroville by buying it one old building at a time. One glimpse of the steep roofs and flower boxes, this seems much farther than 25 miles from San Antonio. This is a shame a dog though in Castroville. That's welcome to Castroville in Alsatian. Helen Lutz grew up here, still speaks her grandparents' language, but her village has changed. This was actually a meat market, Dan's market. But next door adjacent to this in the same building was a saloon. Now this quaint time capsule of a town is gaining population and interest from developers. Locals see it as encroachment from urban sprawl threatening their identity. The real fear was that this downtown, which has so much charm, so much potential, um, would get bought up or, or knocked down even um, by all of that growth coming in. So Joshua Kempf, an eighth generation Castrovillian, and some 30 local families are putting their own money where their memories are. They formed a downtown redevelopment fund. In fact, they've already purchased their first four buildings, including this one, the old post office, which they plan to transform, redoing the facade and the inside. The vision is to curate a a bustling family friendly downtown district with new businesses like a microbrewery um, for an art gallery for a bookstore mm -hmm. uh, for a high-end European uh, or American contemporary restaurant all the while being true to the original architecture so that the Alsatian generations of the past if they got in the time machine and came here they would recognize everything but this rare move is about more than saving buildings for Bradford Bame it's personal. Our great, great, great grandparents came here and built this place from scratch, literally. It's about investing in the future by cherishing their past. I don't want to be the generation that lets it drop. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, how about that? Destination Castroville. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Great plans. Yeah, I think so. Very warm outside yeah. yesterday, Mike. Well, I was going to say very quickly, though, if you've ever been driving out 90 and going through Castroville, just before you cross the Medina River on the left hand side right mm -hmm. there is that building that they brought over log by log from Alsace. And this was about, I remember doing the story on a 25 years ago, something like that. And it's about a, I think, 400 year old building. Oh, wow. Yeah. I probably have driven by it a million times and just didn't it's remember a, it. That, that little park right there on the, the corners, you're going again, west on 90. On 90 just, itself. Just before you pass the river, it's right oh, there. Oh, I have to take another peek. Yeah, yeah very cool. Sense. So I was trying to avoid the fact that we were talking about hot weather and stuff, so. <laughs> it's okay. Wasn't ignoring you. You have to yeah, talk I, about it eventually. <laughs> we gotta talk about it. Yeah, I can't ignore the elephant in the room. Uh, it was 98 degrees yesterday. We're gonna be up in the upper 90s today and for the next few days. So I don't know if you can get used to it, but we're, we're stuck with it. Uh, fairly tranquil morning. Do have some clouds out there. I was able to see a little bit of a uh, kind of a sliver. It's the the waning crescent moon right now. It almost looks like the old Cheshire cat grin out there. By the way, CPS Energy is asking if you can lower your energy demands between two and seven o'clock today. Also, I don't know if you heard this. Saws customers are back into uh, stage one watering restrictions. So that's based on the last number of your address when you can water. Of course, uh, you can only water between 11 a.m. and after before 11 a.m. and after 7 p.m. and handheld, of course, is uh, allowed any time. All right, satellite radar picture yesterday. Yes, there were a couple of showers that popped up and this has to loop back on through up there pretty much in the hill country and even north of the hill country. Didn't even see anything in our vicinity and that's just about going to be the situation today as well. Here's the uh, computer model for 
the next 24 to 36 hours. A couple of these showers along the coastal plain, and that's pretty much going to be about it. And you can almost count those, I think, on one hand. That'll be the case also going into tomorrow. One or two of those that are going to be counted on one hand. Here's the leftovers of Ida, and it was a big rain producer throughout a good portion of the Tennessee Valley. Now it's moving into the Ohio Valley and up to the northeast, and they're looking at, uh, I think I heard a report this morning, about six inches of rain around New York City, and then this is going to continue up into the New England state. So, yeah, it is definitely leaving its mark. And then... Otherwise, for us, there's not much going on. This is all sort of avoiding us off there to the west. Out to the tropics and way over on the other side of the globe, off the coast of Africa, this is now tropical storm Larry, which just formed up just off the uh, Cape Verde Islands. And then we have Kate, which is still sitting here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And both of those are forecast to kind of curve northward and move up. Now, the Hurricane Center is just kind of keeping an eye down here in the Caribbean and says about a 10% chance in the next five days, which is not a very good chance, but just watching the Caribbean to see if something decides to form up sometime, probably if at all by the weekend, nothing for sure as of yet, but obviously getting in toward the, the peak of the hurricane season, then got to keep an eye on things. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies going for 97 today. The average high temperature is 94, so well above that and one or two of those showers possible off to the east. The other thing we have to watch out for humidity, even though it's going to drop somewhat this afternoon, still going to be up there. So we're going to see a lot of low hundreds for trip for um, heat index readings later on today, and that's the case the next couple of days. Then we go into the weekend and we will start to see slightly lower humidity in the afternoon, which is going to be a nice thing. However, it doesn't take as much energy to heat up humidity, so we're going to be looking at slightly higher temperatures. The more comfortable in the shade, there's going to be a hot weekend. Of course, wouldn't you know, the unofficial end of summer, right. it's going out in style. I'll be looking for shade all weekend. Yeah, good idea. Thanks, Mike. 451, about 80 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at a new short form animated series from Disney and Pixar. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, seven, eight, five, Fireball four. Your daily four numbers, one, five, four, zero, Fireball two. Cash five, two, eight, 16, 25, 35. And your Mega Millions, eight, 14, 31, 58, 68, Mega Ball 15, Mega Plier three. Good luck. Welcome back. About five till KISS talks about canceling concerts. Plus, Disney releases a new short form animated series. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Days after KISS frontman Paul Stanley tested positive for COVID-19, his bandmate Gene Simmons is now positive as well. In a statement, KISS said Simmons is experiencing mild symptoms. Both men were fully vaccinated. KISS says it hopes to get back to its tour September 9th in Irvine, California. Hi. Would you like to dance? A new musical version of Cinderella waltzes into your living room this Friday. Pierce Brosnan co-stars as the king, father to the prince that falls in love with Cinderella. And Brosnan tells me at first he wasn't supposed to sing, but he smooth-talked writer-director Kay Cannon. I said, you know, don't you realize that they gave me a platinum album for Mount Mamma Mia? Don't you realize that there's an audience out there that needs to hear me sing once more? And you can hear him sing Friday. Cinderella will stream on Amazon Prime Video. I am dog. Streaming today, a new short form animated series from Pixar. Doug Days follows the adventures of Doug, the talking golden retriever from the film Up. Doug, Doug, get out of my azaleas. Doug Days also features the voice of Ed Asner, who died Sunday at the age of 91. All four episodes are out today on Disney+. Plus. And happy birthday, Zendaya, the Dune and Spider-Man star is 25 today, while multiple Grammy winning singer Gloria Estefan is 64. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Right now it's 456, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest look at the aftermath left behind by Hurricane Ida. As officials say, it could take weeks before power is restored. A new feature on Spotify, making it easier to share your favorite music with family and friends. We'll tell you how it works ahead in Tech Bytes. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky. There's a look at 1604 Van Petrenko looking very empty there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. 
Making headlines this morning from constitutional carry of firearms to abortion. A ton of new laws, hundreds officially take effect today in Texas. And many are still without power this morning thanks to the severe damage left behind by Hurricane Ida. Outside with live camp, just now waking up, uh, the telltale sign of what things are like out there right now is the uh, temperature at the bottom of your screen. We're still hovering right around 80 degrees at five o'clock in the morning, people. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 1st of September. Thanks for joining us this morning. We hope that you survive the wall of humidity as you step outside. That's what you described it as. I think that's accurate. It's thick out there right now. Yeah, even after we had that bit of a break yesterday morning with the humidity, it definitely came back up. And this is on the heels of a hot day yesterday. We hit 98 for the fifth time uh, in the month of August, fifth time this year, of course. And uh, it's going to be hot the next couple of days as well. My little computer not going to work for me here with the, uh, nope, with the little whiz bang type graphics. Anyway, we'll look at this one heat index. That's all that really matters right now. 83 is what it feels like out there at the airport. 89. Yeah, that's what it feels like when you step outside at uh, Stinson and we're going to have heat index readings that are going to be well up into the, the hundreds today. The weather service has issued a statement just talking about that, how yeah, pretty much from San Antonio down to the south and to the southeast. Those heat index readings will be well up a lot of areas uh, up around 105 or higher than that. CPS Energy, it's a uh, peak energy saver, power saver day, I should say, with uh, hopefully you can lower your energy usage between 2 and 7 p.m. later on this afternoon. It's warm and it's, I can't say warm, it's hot and more humid this morning with those heat index readings up in the 80s. Mostly sunny, very hot, a shower or two off to the east. Wouldn't get really excited about rain chances today nor tomorrow. Sunny and hot pretty much the rest of the week and going into the weekend, although a bit lower humidity once we get into the weekend. So it will be slightly more comfortable in the afternoons in the shade. But then again, that's going to help to keep those temperatures way up there. So we will, I mean, a lot of folks are going to be flirting with triple digits over the next few days. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is going on on the road, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here at Trans. Got 1604 at Houseman Sozad. We do have some flashing lights out there. Uh, good news is it's nothing major, just some construction that should be wrapping up here in the next few moments. This is in the westbound lanes of 1604. You can see that we do have some cones out there and some textile crews obviously working to improve the roadways there. Just use caution. Make sure you slow down. We're going to be watching this closely, but right now we're hoping that wraps up pretty soon for that morning drive. Let's go ahead and take a look right now at the map. It's pretty green on the screen. Of course, we always like to see that as we're getting a new day started and people are getting out on the roads, but we do want to bring your attention over here to I-10 westbound. Now, these lanes are experiencing some uh, road work that's been going on since last night. Uh, a little bit earlier, there was some red and yellow, both in the west and eastbound lanes of I-10, but it looks like that's now picking up. Uh, that road work is already, is already taking place. It should be wrapping up tomorrow. Uh, September 2nd is taking place from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. It's leading to the full closure of those westbound main lanes from FM 1516 to Wycold Road, uh, they're retaining wall work out there. So just something to keep in mind. They're going to be diverting traffic onto the frontage road lanes there. But right now, if you're traveling in from Seguin, it's still pretty green with 29 minutes on I-10, 26 coming in from New Braunfels on 35 and 25 coming in from 281 and Volverde. One last look at Trans Guide. We're going to be watching this construction closely. Again, 1604 westbound at Hosman to see how that does impact that morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A total of 666 new laws take effect today. There's a good chance at least one of them will impact your life. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to break down a couple of them. Good morning. Good, good morning, guys. 666. It's a lot of laws, but we're just going to talk about some of them. Some major law changes were inspired by the coronavirus pandemic, the February winter storm, while others are related to guns, education, and the use of medical marijuana. But here are just some of them. So constitutional carry. Texans over the age of 21 will now be able to carry a handgun without a license in Texas. This law removes the requirement of obtaining a state issued license and the training and background check that is part of that process in order to carry a handgun in public. Now, background checks are still required by federal law when purchasing a firearm from a licensed dealer and anti-abortion legislation. So referred to as the heartbeat bill, this new law bans abortions after a fetal heartbeat can be detected, which can sometimes be as early as five weeks after um, a woman's menstruation cycle. So another thing, victims of rape and incest are not exempt, meaning they must carry the pregnancy to term once a fatal heartbeat is detected. 
Body worn cameras. Police officers will now be required to keep their body worn cameras on during investigations. The Star Spangled Banner Protection Act. This is a new law that will require professional sports teams that have contracts with the state to play the anthem prior to the start of every game. Finally, beer and wine sales on Sundays. Previously, Texans could not buy beer and wine until noon on Sundays. This new law expands hours for the sale of beer and wine from 10 a.m. to midnight on Sundays. Now, the sale of liquor is still prohibited in stores on Sundays. Of course, you can find several more of these laws and their full descriptions right now on KSAT.com. Mark. Thank you, Sarah. Election laws in Texas undergoing a rewrite. A new measure has successfully passed the state house and Senate. The 75 page bill now heading to the governor's office for a signature. The measure bans 24 hour polling locations and empowers partisan poll watchers. The bill also makes it a crime for election officials to send mail in ballots applications without a request from the voter. The remnants of Hurricane Ida now taking aim at the northeast U.S. today. Severe thunderstorms are expected throughout the mid-Atlantic region with damaging winds and possible tornadoes. Here's ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi. New aerial video showing the total destruction across parts of southern Louisiana in the wake of Hurricane Ida. Piles of twisted metal and homes left in ruin. After another night in the dark, despair is growing. And so are the long lines for gas needed for generators. The governor flying over St. John Parish, west of New Orleans, where more than 800 people have been rescued. There's no water, and power here could be out for longer than a month. Please don't come home before they tell you that it's time. In the town of Grand Isle, conditions even worse. Officials now saying the entire town is covered in three feet of sand. 40% of the structures, they estimate, are either completely destroyed or maybe just a wall standing up on that building. ABC's Matt Gutman flew over the port that took the biggest hit during the storm. This is Port Fouchon. This is where that 172-mile wind gust was recorded. You can see what it did to that boat dock, obliterating it. In New Orleans, there's hope that some power will be restored beginning today. Just as the heat bears down, feel like temperatures are expected to hit 105 degrees today. But 1,800 miles of transmission lines remain out of service. The race to restore power already taking two lives. Two electric company workers in Alabama were killed, possibly electrocuted. Back in Louisiana, Senator Bill Cassidy tells ABC News the infrastructure bill being considered by Congress includes billions of dollars to harden the electric grid. Money, he says, is much needed. Right now, four parishes in which there's no electricity unless it's provided by a generator. There are the folks who we really have to be concerned about. Monaco Sarabdi. ABC News, New York. And 24-year-old Nicholas Reese is sharing terrifying moments that he said he experienced nearly dying in a hit-and-run crash. Now, San Antonio police said Reese was crossing San Pedro Avenue when they say Antonio Coronado hit him at a high rate of speed before driving off. Reese says the only thing he remembers is pushing the crosswalk button to cross the street to get to the bus stop before he blacked out. The impact left him in the hospital for months with serious injuries, including a 37-day coma. What happened to me is like nowadays, even if you press that button and it's like the thing says, okay, you can walk, make sure to look both ways still. Ruiz is back at work and is getting around, but he still suffers from emotional trauma and loss of memory. Coronado was arrested for failure to stop and render aid. He is now waiting for his case to go before grand jury for indictment. 508, about 79 degrees. And still ahead, why federal officials say people need to be extra cautious about ransomware attacks over Labor Day weekend. And up next, City of San Antonio wants to step up enforcement on noise complaints, how you can be involved in the process. And taking a look outside with a live cam this morning, be aware, lots of humidity out there and things will warm up later today. We'll be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect this Labor Day weekend. Problems with noisy bars, live venues, and house parties are making the city of San Antonio take a closer look at the current noise ordinance. This is a major problem for people who live in busy entertainment areas. The city says police have responded to more than 30,000 noise complaint calls last year. And people along Broadway on the north side say they're fed up with the noise coming from one particular bar. The city of San Antonio formed the noise ordinance task force in the spring to take a look at the current city laws dealing with the problem. Now the city just held the second of three public meetings regarding the issue. People really want to see 
is if we do have a chronic or, or habitual bad actor, someone that really uh, creates excessive noise uh, a lot of the times, how can the noise ornaments maybe have a little bit more teeth to work with those and not really hurt uh, those that are doing it the right way? So now the city's proposing a three-month pilot program where code enforcement would go along with SAPD on calls. The city wants to get a better idea of what's working and what changes could help to make the noise ordinance more effective. The program would have to be approved in next year's budget. Operators of live entertainment businesses say they want to see more consistent enforcement. And if you want to weigh in on the issue, there will be a virtual meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. You can also submit comments directly to that email on your screen. 513, still 79 degrees. And still ahead, how Spotify is allowing friends to match their musical tastes and make playlists together. And Samsung's new Galaxy Watch is getting an official walkie-talkie app. I may have moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Or psoriatic arthritis. But we are so much more. We're team players and artists. Designers and do-it-yourselfers. Parents and friends. If joint pain is getting in the way of who you are, it's time to talk to your doctor about Embril. Embril helps relieve joint pain and helps stop permanent joint damage. Plus, Embril helps skin get clearer in psoriatic arthritis. Ask your doctor about Embril so you can get back to your true self. Play ball! Embril may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Embril if you have an infection like the flu. Visit Embril.com to see how your joint damage could progress. Embril, eligible patients may pay as little as five dollars per month. In today's Tech Bites, a holiday weekend ransomware warning. The federal government is warning companies to stay alert for cyber attacks over the Labor Day holiday. The most recent major incidents took place leading into Mother's Day, Memorial Day, and July 4th. Spotify has rolled out Blend. It's a personalized playlist that allows friends to discover how their musical tastes overlap after users' playlists are blended. Personal lists can be made using the songs that appeal to both people. Spotify will also make recommendations based on your taste. And finally, Samsung has launched a new walkie-talkie app for some of its smartwatches. It allows push-to-talk conversations between two or more people wearing the Galaxy Watch 4 or the Watch 4 Classic. The walkie-talkie feature is similar to one Apple introduced for the Apple Watch in 2018. Those are your Tech bites. Over. Have a great day. 517. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Things were looking pretty quiet. Hey, over there. Uh, yeah, you know, we did have some construction out here of 16 to Fort Houseman. You saw a few flashing lights as we got the morning started uh, right now, but it looks like that's cleared out, which is some really good news. If you're going to be heading out the door there in the next few moments through 16 to we know it's a pretty heavily traveled route. So let's go ahead and take a look around town, see how things are shaping up. I-10 at Days of All. It looks a little dark out there and lonesome, if I say. And as we continue to take a look at these trans got shots, US 90 at 36 looks a little bit busier right now, but overall, the morning is pretty smooth so far. We're looking at a stall, though. We're Reported here off I-10 eastbound, where a lane is blocked at exit 550. That's Ralph Fair Road. Again, one lane is blocked due to a stalled vehicle. But overall, we're not seeing a lot of issues out there, uh, at least at this hour. Sometimes as the morning picks up, we tend to see a few more of those stalls popping up on our maps and then clearing out. But just as a reminder, always check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. And as you see here, it's getting a little bit busier at I-10 at ProBent. One last look at Loop 410 at New Braunfels, getting a little bit more folks out on the roadways as they're getting their day started early with us. But thankfully, no big issues to reports at this hour, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, good Mike, news. Mike, are you still hearing locusts in your neighborhood trees at all? Mm. Or did they are all you? burn to death? <laughs> <laughs> it's, instead of the buzzing, it's just like a... <laughs> it's more of a pant. They're all panting. panting out there, yeah, because it's, it's hot and dry, and yeah, there's the sun just blazing through that tree. Beautiful picture. I love the composition of it, but uh, yeah, it's you want to find as much shade as possible. We did hit 98 yesterday, so that's the fifth day in a row, or excuse me, the fifth 
fifth day in the month of August, beg your pardon, where we did hit 98 degrees. That's the highest we've been officially out there at the airport so far this year. 83 is the heat index right now. 89 at Stinson, 86 Pleasanton and 85 up the road in Canyon Lake. So yeah, it is much, much more humid this morning and you can almost add in some cases about 20 degrees to these numbers. We're going to have heat index readings well up into the low hundreds later on today. So Definitely got to watch it. Uh, high temperature yesterday again, 98. Pleasanton hit 100. Hondo did. And, you know, it's been funny because looking at this map in the past few weeks, there have been maybe a couple, two, three triple digits on it. But uh, now it got up to 105 yesterday in Del Rio. These were the actual recorded temperatures today, mid and upper 90s around the area a lot of these 97s around here and again then you got to factor in the humidity and therefore we're going to be up into the uh, low uh, approaching 105 in many areas and that's where your body just does not cool itself all that efficiently all right here's that computer model that usually kind of is very generous sort of you know broad brushes in any rain chances and not even with a broad brush getting anything around here. A couple of showers down to the southeast. That's pretty much going to be about it. Same thing tomorrow, even going in through the weekend, you know, a sea breeze shower or two, but um, that'll be pretty much about it. It is just going to be hot. It is going to be dry, and that's the situation all the way in through Labor Day. And the reason for it, that high pressure has now built back in here, and that's pretty much in control, just about sitting right on top of us. And so that's pushing down in the atmosphere. It's really suppressing any any sort of rain to try and pop up and that's going to be the case all the way through. This is where this thing should have been pretty much all summer long or is usually positioned all summer long, but it has not been up until really this point and it's going to pretty much for all intents and purposes stay in place, although by the first part of the week it will slide off to the west a little bit more. So maybe we would start to see even a couple little disturbances perhaps try and slide on in here to at least give us a chance for some rain going into next week. But really between now and, and Labor Day and, and Tuesday of next week, pretty much nothing out there except sunshine and hot temperatures. We will see a slight break in the humidity, so that's one one uh, little plus side, I guess you could say, to the forecast. 90 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. One or two showers, mainly down to the southeast. Wouldn't get excited about it. We're going to be at 97. Heat index is going to be well up into the hundreds. We will stay very hot all the way through the long Labor Day weekend, getting up to 98s over the weekend. Slightly lower humidity. Like I said, that's one one positive out of this, but with that lower humidity, that does allow temperatures to get up there more easily. So yeah, a lot of folks are going to be flirting with triple digits the next few days and those high heat index readings today. Flirting with yeah. triple, triple digits, but not quite The there. locusts will still be panting. <laughs> what looks yes. like a bottle cap is actually a cog in machinery yeah. for Labor, Labor Day, Day, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 522, about 79 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight. Last look at No Time to Die before its long-awaited debut. Plus, KISS canceling concerts. 525, one of the first movies delayed due to the pandemic is finally reaching theaters. And that's not the only COVID connection to today's entertainment news. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. We used to be able to get into a room with the enemy. And now they're just floating in the ether. When our secret finds its way out, it'll be the death of you. Oh my God, target enough people. People become the weapon. The final trailer is out for No Time to Die, Daniel Craig's fifth and final turn as James Bond, as the agent comes out of retirement for one more mission. After nearly two years of delays, the conclusion to Craig's career as 007 finally flies into U.S. theaters October 8th. Shout it, shout it out. KISS bassist Gene Simmons has tested positive for the coronavirus just after the group's frontman, Paul Stanley, announced he'd recovered from COVID-19. The band has postponed four concerts and says it hopes to return to the stage September 9th in Irvine, California. I grew up in a somewhat tough neighborhood in Brooklyn. The culture is that you didn't get intimidated by a lot of things. When someone attacks, I don't immediately fight back. Dr. Anthony Fauci is the subject of a new documentary. Fauci looks at the life of the infectious disease expert, including his work during the HIV AIDS epidemic. The film debuts September 10th, perhaps fittingly only in theaters that require proof of vaccination for entrance. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
And time now is 527, and it's about 79 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, the Food and Drug Administration now facing a decision on COVID booster shots. Why two senior FDA vaccine leaders have stepped down. And back by popular demand, it's Kraft's mac and cheese ice cream. We're going to tell you when and where you can get this treat <laughs> that might make you scream. And a cute pet wants to go home with Aww. you today. We're checking in with our friends at the Animal Defense League in a matter of minutes. A local artist is taking her talents from the windows to the walls. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll introduce you to one of San Antonio's up and coming muralists. That's coming up. Making headlines this morning as talks of more COVID, COVID booster shots continue. Two senior FDA leaders are stepping down. And taking a look outside with live cam, expect humidity when you open the door and later on expect some heat. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, September 1st. Happy Wednesday. We made it to Wednesday. We made it to September. So congrats. Hope you had a great week so far. Uh, outside this morning, the air is thick with humidity. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mike, at one point on my way in on 281, I thought I saw fog, but uh, I, I doubt it. Well, I, you know, there could be a little bit of uh, some reduced visibility here and there with all this humidity. We do have some clouds, though, so that would help prevent any fog. But uh, yeah, there's a bunch of it out there. And like you had mentioned last half hour, it's like walking into a wall when you step outside this morning. 79 is the temperature, but that dew point is way up to 76. Just to compare to yesterday, it was uh, right around 70 or so at this time. So yes, a lot more moisture in the atmosphere. Wind out of the south at six miles per hour. It feels like 89 right now at Stinson when you factor in the temperature, the humidity feels like 85 up the road in Canyon Lake 84 at Randolph. Uh, it is a power saver day from CPS Energy. If you can reduce your energy usage between 2 and 7 p.m., that would help out today. And temperature is going to make it up to 90 at noon, 97 for a high. We did hit 98 yesterday. That's the fifth time so far this year. The hottest still so far this year. And one or two of those showers well off to the east doubtful at best, just kind of a mention of it, but that 97, one thing for sure is it's going to feel like it's well up into the low hundreds, and that's going to be the case. The weekend is going to be just as hot for the unofficial end of summer. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on on the highways and byways? It is quiet out there, Mike, and that's, of course, uh, good news if you're going to be heading out in the next few moments. Taking a look at uh, US 90, at, or pardon me, we're taking a look here at New Braunfels. Just a few folks out there in the morning as we're getting things started. Very quiet here from what we can see from this shot at trans guide again just a few folks getting their morning started early with us here uh, so things that they can expect right now if they are going to be traveling here by i10 eastbound there was a lane block there looks like it just cleared out for uh, exit was blocked at 550 uh, ralph Fair road due to a stalled vehicle again that looks like it has since cleared out of our system so that's some pretty good news for drivers going through that area especially good news for that driver that is uh, was experiencing some car trouble out there uh, but we do want to take your attention here to i10 westbound at north graytown road where we are seeing a minor slowdown there in those westbound lanes. Traffic right now is moving at 16 miles per hour. We did talk about some construction that is going on out there overnight construction that is that should be wrapping up by now. But again, we are seeing that slowdown. So just be prepared to, uh, you know, hit the brakes a little bit sooner rather than later. OK, as we're taking a look at the wider map here, we do see a lot of green on the screen. Of course, we do like to see that. And if you're traveling to San Antonio in the next few moments, we do have these inbound times coming in from 20 uh, Bernie on I-10. We have 25 minutes right now to the downtown San Antonio area coming in from 90 18 minutes in Castroville 16 minutes from Lido little time there on 35 and one last look at trans guide more than shaping up to be quite nice guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mark your calendars for September 20th of this year. That's when the White House is planning for COVID boosters to be available for anyone who's been fully vaccinated with Pfizer or Moderna. The problem is approval for that hasn't happened yet. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, it's adding to frustration inside the FDA. Please not another one. Another case of COVID-19, another hospitalization, another death. It's inevitable and we know what's going to happen, but the probability of it being a good outcome is very, very low. Especially for the unvaccinated, but less than 62% of people 12 and up are fully vaccinated. As the push to ramp up vaccinations continues, the FDA is assessing additional COVID-19 vaccine approvals, vaccines for kids younger than 12, and booster shots, which U.S. health officials have said they want to be available starting the week of September 20th. We announced our approach in order to stay ahead 
of the virus. But the FDA hasn't given its authorization, and a source tells CNN there's been some frustration inside the agency about the White House stepping into the FDA's lane and getting ahead of where the science is by setting booster goals. We have been also been very clear throughout that this is pending FDA conducting an independent evaluation and CDC's panel of outside experts issuing a booster dose recommendation. But two senior leaders in the vaccine review office are stepping down. In a letter addressing the retirements, the agency's interim director said these are difficult times requiring extraordinary effort. The workload is immense. Morale has suffered, but the virus persists. I'm Britt Conway reporting. President Joe Biden is set to meet with Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky today in Washington. During the meeting, Zelensky is expected to request increased military aid and backing for his country's bid for NATO membership. The White House says the meeting is aimed at supporting Ukraine's sovereignty in the face of Russia's seizure of Crimea and backing of armed separatists in the country's east. Biden also intends to encourage Zelensky's efforts to tackle corruption and reassure him that the U.S. will help protect Ukraine's energy security. Social Security will have to cut benefits in 2034 if Congress doesn't act. That's according to an annual report from the program and Medicare trustees. 2034 is a year earlier than previously projected. That's because COVID-19 caused a drop in employment and a loss of payroll tax dollars. Back here at home today, San Antonio is entering stage one water restrictions. It's the first time it's happened since May. It means outdoor watering with a sprinkler or irrigation system is limited to before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. one day per week. And your day is based on the last number in your street address. Stage one restrictions will remain in effect until the aquifer is above the trigger level for 15 consecutive days. We have all this information on KSAT.com. And time now is 536 and it's about 79 degrees out there. Still ahead, you may be screaming in one way or another for this ice cream. We'll tell you about the return of Kraft's mac and cheese ice cream. Also up next in California, a huge firefighting force bracing for strong winds today as more residents in neighboring Nevada are being ordered to evacuate. Outside with live cam, a very, very warm start to the month of September. Pretty typical around here. We'll talk to Mike and look ahead to the uh, Labor Day weekend. A lot of folks are off for a three-day weekend. We'll talk about that coming up. Just about 540. Welcome back now to the wildfire emergency in the state of California. Flames described as being 100 feet high are now just miles from Lake Tahoe. The Caldor fire is over 300 square miles and now threatening popular tourist spots in the area. Almost 500 homes have been destroyed so far. ABC's Christine Sloan with the latest. This morning, mandatory evacuation orders around Lake Tahoe are expanding as a massive wildfire approaches the world famous resort area. As of Tuesday night, the Calder fire was only three miles from the hotels and casinos in South Lake Tahoe, and the flames show no signs of slowing down. One firefighter saying he never expected this area to be threatened by a wildfire. The erratic winds, the terrain, the dry weather, it's just done stuff I've never would have ever believed would have happened. Overnight, the Calder fire was only 18% contained, already burning 200,000 acres along with nearly 500 homes. 34,000 buildings now threatened. On Tuesday, tens of thousands of people evacuated. There is only one way out of town, Highway 50, and it's a parking lot out there. The flames blazing a trail of destruction through nearby communities. ABC's Kena Whitworth. We're just a few yards away here from an entire neighborhood in Christmas Valley that's being threatened right now. And now wildlife is being pushed from the mountains. This bear was spotted looking for food in a deserted South Lake Tahoe. Officials say nearly everyone has evacuated South Lake Tahoe. Only a handful of residents have defied the evacuation order. Christine Sloan, ABC News. And time now is 541. And it's about 80 degrees out there. Up next, we're checking in with our friends at Animal Defense League and a pet that needs a new home.
Well, it is itty bitty time. Don't know if necessarily considered a puppy. Well, eight months old, still a puppy. Yeah, right, she's Michelle? still a little thing. Yeah, Michelle's here from the Animal Defense League, and oh my goodness, that is the smallest yes, dog in the world. Is. So this is Chicken Nugget, and she is a true <laughs> Nugget. Believe it or not, she is eight months old. Um, so she was brought to us whenever she was just a little itty bitty thing, and she was sent over to foster so she could get to have an, an available age and weight to be spayed or neutered. Um, and she's a special girl, so she actually doesn't have functionality in her back legs, but she does not let that hold her back. She is just the happiest little camper and will bounce around. And yeah, she's ready to find her forever home now. She's just as cute as can be. <laughs> well, you've got a big event coming up. I know it's we only do. September, but got to think ahead to October. Your big, big fundraising it's event, It's going right? to be here before we know it. So we have our annual fundraising gala. It's our largest fundraiser of the year. It's our fur ball event. And this year it's going to be hosted at our main campus on Nacogdoches. And we're selling tickets to the public now. Um, we're, we have a main availability on October 13th. And um, like I said, this is how we get a lot of our funds to help babies like Miss Chicken Nugget. And this is a, a perfect opportunity in other years it's been at other venues but yeah. now people get to actually see exactly. the campus out there and all the facilities that you have and what you may need and yes. you get to uh, maybe do a little shopping for yes. little puppies and kittens and it'll right? it'll be a great event it's sit down dinner it's a three course meal uh, we'll have animals that'll be around that you can socialize with it's going to be a lot of fun all right and you can go to their website to find out more about that and for ticket information and for pricing or just head out to 11300 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center yeah. across from the zoo and uh Pick up a little chicken nugget out there. Little chicken nugget. Thank you, dear. What a cutie, chicken nugget. <laughs> In your morning consumer headlines, workers at Walgreens are getting a pay raise next year. The pharmacy chain says it is increasing its starting wage for all hourly employees to $15 an hour. The pay increase will be rolled out in phases with the first month happening in October. The company says starting pay will not fully hit $15 an hour until November of 2022. Walgreens has 190,000 employees working across 9,000 locations in the U.S. Hyundai Motor Company unveiling a new computer-driven car this week. Meet the Ionic 5 Robo Taxi. This Robo Taxi, an all-electric vehicle that can safely operate without a driver, according to Hyundai. Passengers do have some control over the vehicle. They'll be able to use different interfaces in the car's interior to tell it things such as when to make an extra stop. Lyft plans to use the Robo Taxi to transport some of its passengers starting in 2023. It's what everybody has been waiting for, right? Kraft Macaroni and Cheese Ice Cream is back, and here's a scoop on how to get it. The Kraft Heinz Company is partnering with Van Leeuwen Ice Cream to create the product. That company is selling $12 pints on its website with a limit of two per customer. It also has a link to participating stores, but that information isn't online as of this morning. The two companies launched a limited run of mac and cheese ice cream back in July, and it sold out quickly. You talk to anybody about mac and cheese ice cream, you get one of two reactions. It's either hmm or Ugh. <laughs> Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. What about you, Steven? What do you think? Are you a hmm or a ugh? I'm just a straight up no. A straight no, up no, no. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. But if okay. it's offered, I mean, uh, what are you going to do, right? I mean, you just got to kind of bite the bullet there. But, uh, eh, you know, ice cream is ice cream. I 10 at Bernie Stage Road. Let's take our attention there off that mac and cheese because it's making my stomach hurt. Uh, as we see here, we got a few road flares out there. Uh, we talked about a stalled vehicle up there off I 10. Uh, it looked like it had cleared from our system. I checked the shot at Trans Guide. Uh, there were still some flashing lights out there indicating the driver was still receiving some assistance. Bringing you here, that stall is reported here off I-10 eastbound. That lane is still blocked on the shoulder at exit 550 at Ralph Fair Road, so use caution. As you just saw those road flares out there, we do still have folks working to assist that driver. And as we take a wider look at the map, overall, the morning's been pretty good and decent so far, so nothing that's going to cause any inconvenience for your morning drive. If you got to grab that cup of coffee this morning to get your day started, and as we look ahead to September, it's already a new month. Can't believe it. Let's just talk about this sign. It's installation uh, that's leading to an alternating northbound main lane closure. We've brought this up yesterday and a few times as we inch closer to the end of the month here, but it's off Loop 1604 to Stone Oak Parkway to TPC Parkway. Now that's been going on since Monday, but we'll be wrapping up this Friday. It is an overnight deal from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, so of course keep that in mind. Mark your calendars or find alternative routes if that is through your area, but right now uh, be sure to use some caution out there at I-10 at Bernie Stage Road where we still have that stalled vehicle. Move over and slow down for those TxDOT Hero crews who again are working to help that driver out guys. Thank you, Steven. You know, when you think about it, though, have you ever been over to uh, what is it? Lick over there in the Pearl and they've got yeah. some unusual oh, flavors like mm -hmm. beet and mint or whatever it may be. Yes, and, they do. And it's pretty. It's pretty good. So well for adults. 
because yeah. I took my little girl there, wow. and she was just like, "What in the world?" What did you make? What did you make Rooney eat? Well, so I didn't make her. She wanted she wanted the pink uh -huh. ice cream, but it was beet, and I'm like, "You don't want that." She oh. wanted, she wanted strawberry, and they didn't have strawberry. Oh, they but didn't I wonder have the traditional if, if you had not said you don't want that, if she'd been like, hmm, "Mom, this isn't bad." Maybe I should. Well, I just didn't want her to be mad at me. I, I wanted to be <laughs> oh. upfront and honest See, with now her. Now we get down to the root of it. She didn't want Rooney <laughs> mad at her. <laughs> I have to be honest about I it. Know. Dad or Steph just said that so she could eat the ice cream herself. Oh, oh. yeah. It's Is that what happened, Steph? No. <laughs> no, I had to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So, you know, nice ice cream. Well, the only problem with the weather like this, ice cream tastes really good, but it melts really quickly. You got to eat it very, very quickly. And then you get the, the brain freeze because it's going to melt all over your hands. Yeah. So, it's, so, so what it's, are the other? Yeah, it's one or the other. So, uh, yeah, but. Ah, uh, fall will be upon us. We can win. That's the big question because it ain't any time soon. Excuse my grammar. It's going to be very, very hot. Now, of course, we are still in the uh, summer season. That doesn't change until the 22nd. And uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be feeling like summer. And don't forget, watering restrictions did go into effect today. This is for SAWS customers. It's the last number of your address. And hand watering is allowed Anytime, of course, you can only water before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. on your designated day. And the reason for it is uh, the aquifer has just been dropping off over the past couple of weeks. Of course, we had that big surge with all the rain in May, and that really bumped it up, dried out a little bit. Then the big surge with all the rain in July. We had some more to start off the month of August and that a little bit the past couple of days, but it has been a slow and steady decline. And so once again, that's why the 10 uh, day average has dropped below those uh, the threshold for restrictions. 83 is what it feels like right now. 89 at Stinson and the dew point temperatures. You know, we always talk about maybe one or two degrees can make a lot of difference. Seven degrees higher this morning in Hondo, six higher in San Antonio, six degrees higher in Pleasanton. That's why it feels like a wall of humidity when you step outside. There were a couple of showers and thunderstorms scattered about the area yesterday primarily up to the north. That was pretty much about it. Now off to the north and east. That's the leftovers of Ida and this is still going to be a huge rain producer. Saw one report today where they're expecting maybe upwards of about six inches of rain in parts of uh, New York as well as New England. There's a lot of rain off to the west of us, but that's not going to be coming on in here because we've got this big kind of high pressure sitting right on top of us and that is what is pushing down in the atmosphere. That's what's dominating things, uh, suppressing really any rain chances. There may be one or two of them along the coastal plain later on today, but that'll be uh, about it. We're going to make it up to 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. Just a mention of one or two of those showers along the coastal plain today. 97 high temperature, which is about three degrees or so above the average high. Then you factor in the humidity. It's going to feel like the hundreds and that'll be the situation the next couple of days. You know, a stray shower tomorrow is possible. We will get slightly lower humidity over the weekend, so a bit more comfortable in the shade, uh, but that's going to allow temperatures to heat up even more. So there were a lot of triple digits around yesterday. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are going to be looking at it the next couple of days. Whether we hit it officially here in town, it's going to be a really close call. Ouch. Yeah. But lower humidity, hey. <laughs> it's a little Again, a little bit of a pain. Eternal optimist over there. Thanks, Mike. 552, about 79 degrees. And the latest movie in Marvel Cinematic Universe arrives in theaters this weekend. Up next, we're going to hear from the cast of Shang-Chi and the set and the legend of the Ten Rings. You have the wrong guy. Does he look like he can fight? Come on, bro. <laughs> Yes, actually, he can fight. Simu Liu is the newest hero of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Is this what you wanted? You talk about the trajectory of someone's life being completely and forever changed. Um, you know, it, it sent me on the wildest journey ever, filming in Australia for over a year, and, and all of the, you know, amazing experiences that have come because of it. S-H-A-N-G, Shang. Shang? Yeah. You changed your name from Shang to Sean? It was kind of 
trippy to even just like be there as an actress because we're playing with with such like in such the real world, right? Like in San Francisco, and when we're first introduced, and then we are suddenly in this kind of like crazy universe. And I think that's just marvel, you know. I think it's 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 one of those rare platforms where you could really travel seamlessly between just like these really crazy different places. We knew that we wanted this this movie to take us to a pretty fantastical level from from the beginning. And we also knew that we wanted to start people in a very grounded place. You can't outrun. You really are. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Today marks the start of Hunger Action Month, and our KSAT community partners are hosting a town hall to discuss food insecurity in South Texas. We'll be speaking with a panel of experts about the topic and answering questions submitted by you, our viewers. You can watch it on KSAT.com or the KSAT TV app. It's from 2 to 3 this afternoon. We have all the information on KSAT.com. Ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, the latest on the search and rescue off the coast of Southern California. Five people are missing following a Navy helicopter crash. We will have an update. Plus, I'll tell you what role snakes could play in our battle against the coronavirus. At a late night rollover crash on the northeast side sends a family of three and another man to area hospitals. We'll have those details. Transcide right now. There's I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. A few folks trickling in from the Texas Hill Country towards San Antonio, and they're tapping the brakes there at 281 near Hildebrand. We'll be back. This morning on GMSA, we'll tell you why researchers say a specific type of snake could be an answer to help eliminate the coronavirus. California continues to burn as wildfires spread. This morning, new evacuations are in order. We're gonna have the very latest. Well, after a fairly cool summer, things have really heated up around here at the end of August, and we start September pretty much the same way. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you and your family. It is Wednesday, September 1st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you're having a good week so far, and hope you can stay cool. It's getting pretty hot out there. Yeah, you factor in the humidity, which is just absolutely thick out out there this morning here in South Texas. Morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, it really shot up. Yesterday was, you know, not bad at this time, but yeah, it's very humid out there and it's going to be humid enough to where heat index readings are going to be well up into the hundreds again today. So you got to you got to watch and that's going to be the case the next few days. We really didn't have any rain in our vicinity yesterday and that's pretty much going to be the situation today. There could be a stray shower here or there along the, the coastal plain, but that'll be about it. I wouldn't get your hopes up at almost at all for any rain today. Still feels like 89 at Stinson, 85 at the airport. Same thing up the road in Canyon Lake. CPS Energy asks if you can cut back on your power usage between 2 and 7 o'clock later on today. And as far as temperatures, we may drop down another uh, couple of notches here or there. And my nifty little map is not working right now, but what I can tell you, it's going to be a hot one today. We're going to make it up to 97 degrees, about three, almost four degrees above normal. And the heat index is going to be well up into the hundreds. It's going to be that case all the way through the next couple of days. And then we are going to see temperatures that will start getting even hotter, probably toward the weekend. Nice thing is, though, we're going to see some lower humidity slightly lower humidity for the weekend, but that then allows temperatures to more easily heat up. So there's going to be a lot of folks that will be seeing some triple digits in the next couple of days. Any rain at all down the road? We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Uh, we have a pretty good start now that it's 6 a.m. I-10 at Days of Allah shows. Uh, still a few folks out there, not quite busy, but looking a little busy there off US 90 at 36, seeing a little bit of scattered uh, folks out there right now when it comes to the road. Ways. We still have that stalled vehicle out there at I-10 at Bernie Stage Road, 281 at Winding Way, getting a little bit of uh, folks out on the roads now that we are getting a little bit closer to 7 a.m. But that stall still reported out there of I-10 eastbound with the lane block at exit 550. That's shoulder lane, that is, right at Ralph Fair Road. And we're going to go ahead and take you to another stall right now. This one reported off Loop 1604 eastbound at Bitters Road. Overall, we have been seeing a lot more of these stalls, especially now that the morning is picking up and we're seeing more people getting out on the roadways, as you just saw. 
Uh, so check those vehicles before you get out there. And if you're traveling to San Antonio, it's inbound time for you right now. Everything looks pretty green, as you can see on the screen. If you're coming in from uh, Bernie on I-10, we have 25 minutes at this hour. 281, we're looking at 26 minutes from Bolverde and 26 on 35 coming in from New Braunfels. So although we do have these stalls, thankfully they're not causing any inconvenience on the roadway. Still early enough to go grab that coffee and get where you need to be on time and safely. Keep it safe, guys. Stephen, thank you very much. This morning, the San Antonio Food Bank is stepping up to help out those impacted by Hurricane Ida in Louisiana. Sarah Costa is live at the food bank as they get ready to send off a semi truck full of goods. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, guys. Yeah, this is the second semi truck that the food bank here in San Antonio has sent over the last 24 hours. They are getting they're actually loading it up right now. It's going to take off at seven o'clock this morning. And a lot of these items that are needed down in Louisiana are lots of water. It's going to be in this truck, protein items, snack items, things that don't require electricity, easy to open items, including cleaning supplies are needed. Now, this truck is going to be headed to Lafayette. That is kind of like the staging area where the goods will begin to be distributed because a lot of the roads are closed. So that's where they're going to meet up. And all these area food banks, about 20 of them, are going to be distributing goods and t seeing what people need in what areas. Now, earlier we spoke with Michael Guetta with the food bank about the truck of supplies headed out to help. We're sending our second truck out to Louisiana. A lot of staging going on from food banks around the United States, just making sure they're sending the right food at the right time. So cleaning supplies, water. It's a full semi-tractor trailer load that's getting ready to go at 7 a.m. this morning, the second of many we know that are coming from us. And Michael was telling me earlier that they got the call around 9 o'clock on Sunday from those area food banks saying, hey, we're going to need help. And then just about, it took about three days, and now those trucks are headed out. Back to you guys. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. The remnants of Hurricane Ida are now taking aim at the northeast U.S. today. Severe thunderstorms are expected throughout the mid-Atlantic region with damaging winds and possible tornadoes. Here's ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi. New aerial video showing the total destruction across parts of southern Louisiana in the wake of Hurricane Ida. Piles of twisted metal and homes left in ruin. After another night in the dark, despair is growing, and so are the long lines for gas needed for generators. The governor flying over St. John Parish west of New Orleans, where more than 800 people have been rescued. There's no water, and power here could be out for longer than a month. Please don't come home before they tell you that it's time. In the town of Grand Isle, conditions even worse. Officials now saying the entire town is covered in three feet of sand. 40% of the structures, they estimate, are either completely destroyed or maybe just a wall standing up on that building. ABC's Matt Gutman flew over the port that took the biggest hit during the storm. This is Port Fouchon. This is where that 172-mile wind gust was recorded. You can see what it did to that boat dock, obliterating it. In New Orleans, there's hope that some power will be restored beginning today. Just as the heat bears down, feel like temperatures are expected to hit 105 degrees today. But 1,800 miles of transmission lines remain out of service. The race to restore power already taking two lives. Two electric company workers in Alabama were killed, possibly electrocuted. Back in Louisiana, Senator Bill Cassidy tells ABC News the infrastructure bill being considered by Congress includes billions of dollars to harden the electric grid. Money, he says, is much needed. Right now, four parishes in which there's no electricity unless it's provided by a generator. They are the folks who we really have to be concerned about. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News. New York. 666 new laws take effect today here in Texas. So this morning we're discussing some of the most talked about legislation. First up, constitutional carry. Texans over the age of 21 will now be able to carry a handgun without a license in the Lone Star State. This means no training or background check is part of that process. Next, anti-abortion legislation. This law bans abortions after a fetal heartbeat can be detected. Victims of rape and incest are not exempt, meaning they must carry the pregnancy to term. Another new law surrounds body-worn cameras. Police officers are now required to keep them on during investigations. Finally, beer and wine sales on Sundays. This new law expands hours of sale for beer and wine from 10 a.m. to midnight on Sundays. You can read more about a number of these new laws on KSAT.com. 
and in California, flames are being described as being 100 feet high there. The Caldor fire has burned over 200,000 acres and is threatening popular tourist spots in that area. Almost 500 homes have been destroyed so far. This morning, mandatory evacuation orders around Lake Tahoe are expanding. Crews there say the flames show no signs of slowing down. In other local news, for the first time since he was nearly hit and killed in a hit and run crash last October, 24 year old Nicholas Ruiz is sharing those terrifying moments he had to while trying to cross the street. San Antonio police say Ruiz was crossing San Pedro when Antonio Coronado hit him at a high rate of speed before driving off. Ruiz says the only thing he remembers is pushing the crosswalk button to cross the street to get to the bus stop. The impact left him in the hospital with months, four months rather, with serious injuries, including a 37 day coma. He says he wants his survival story to inspire others to be careful on the roads and for pedestrians to be overly cautious. What happened to me is like nowadays, even if you press that button and it's like the thing says, okay, you can walk, make sure to look both ways still. Ruiz is back at work getting around, but he still suffers from emotional trauma and some loss of memory. Coronado was arrested on a charge of failure to stop and render aid. He is now waiting for his case to go before a grand jury. And happening today, we will be hosting a KSEC Community Town Hall discussing food insecurity in Bear County. Max Massey and Sarah Costa will be joined by CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper, and other experts on nutrition and health. If you have any questions for the panelists, you can submit them right now on KSEC.com. Again, our feeding tomorrow town hall will be today at 2 p.m. And time now at 6.09, about 79 degrees right now. Could a snake hold the secret to fighting and winning the war against COVID-19? Just ahead, why experts say it could help lead to saving lives. Plus, the prices for home and apartment rent is on the rise. We're going to break down the numbers and what it all means for you. Outside with live camp, just about as humid as it gets here in the San Antonio metropolitan area. Any break in sight? We're going to check in with Mike coming up. And we will circle back and talk to Stephen about your morning commute. Now to consumer news and some potential home buyers finding themselves priced out of the market. And they're not getting much luck when it comes to renting either. Experts say rent for single family homes is up nearly 13%. Apartment rent is up over 8%. The union representing pilots at Southwest now suing the airline over rules put in place before and during the pandemic. The union says those rules affected pay and working conditions, both things that should be negotiated. The two sides have been working on a new contract since January of 2020. It's deja vu all over again for toilet paper makers. Procter & Gamble says demand is up for toilet paper and paper towels. They're running production lines 24-7 again. The company says back to school shopping and a rise in COVID cases are likely all to blame. And check this out. Brazilian researchers say they have found a molecule in the venom of one kind of pit viper that hinders COVID-19 reproduction in monkey cells. They say it could be the first step in making a drug to fight the virus. Now researchers will evaluate how well different doses work in fighting the virus. They hope to test the substance in human cells. We'll try to keep you posted right now, 614 on your Wednesday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, everybody. Well, there's not really a lot to talk about right now on the roadways just how good things are looking which is really nice and we're hoping it of course it does stay that way i-37 at pecan valley shows just a few people out there we're going to keep the shot up on the rotator just to talk about how smooth right now the commute has been appearing on these shots at trans guy loop 1604 at petranco getting a little bit busier and keep in mind 1604 is one of those heavily traveled routes getting a little bit busier here though off loop 410 at jackson keller with more people getting their morning started early with us and hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee so nothing too major that's going to cause any delays right now, but uh, we are seeing this stall vehicle that just popped up in our system. Loop 1604 eastbound at Valero Way. Uh, there was a few stalls on 1604 this morning, so it's been a pretty much a busy start there on this particular area of San Antonio, but thankfully it's not causing any issues right now. We've been seeing a lot of green on the screen, and it looks like we may have a lane closure up here on I-10 that just popped up, and we'll check that out, find out if that's going to be impacting anybody's drive time to San Antonio or maybe to Seguin. So we'll check that out in a minute, but one last look here at I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. A few flashing lights out there are vehicles, I should say, and thankfully nothing too big on the radar that's going to cause any issues. Power line shot right here. Thought we throw that in. 
Nice. <laughs> Why not? Like Electricity's it. looking good, too. Would have been cool if there were birds on that thing. You know? right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait for the for, sun to come up. For early <laughs> morning, yes. What are, what are the birds that always hang around by the uh, the quarry and sometimes on Broadway there? Are they grack? Not grackles. Grackles? Blackbirds? I would not know. The quarry? Yeah. When there's like a zillion of them, mm -hmm. and they line up on the power lines, and they're, and they're so evenly spaced. Yes. Looks like yes. somebody set them up. So I guess mm -hmm. they're like a wingspan apart or something. Just... Send us a picture. I was at HEB yesterday with a huge overhang up there, uh, yeah. north side, and I heard this loud squawking sound, and I realized it's their anti-grackle or blackbird oh, system. Really? Oh. It sounds like an owl on steroids. <laughs> so they're scaring humans. Instead. Definitely got my attention. <laughs> walking the car going, Jesus, I'm awake now. You, you felt like Tippy Hedren, didn't you? So people From, are like, who? Who? From yeah, I was like, who? Yeah, the woman and bird. Oh, in the birds, yeah, in Hitchcock. The birds. Got I it. have seen that movie. Thing on? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, warm this morning. Boy, the humidity is really, really high. Uh, much, much higher than what it was yesterday. We'll be uh, maybe dropping down another couple of notches, partly, in some cases, mostly cloudy skies, and then plenty of sunshine today. 97 degrees for a high temperature. We did hit 98 yesterday to end up the month of August. That was the fifth time we hit 98, the hottest officially out there at the airport. A mention of a shower or two, I wouldn't get really excited about it. One or two of them along the, the coastal plain, that'll pretty much be about it. This is a really, really neat looking picture. It does look like something out of a sci-fi movie there. And it's sunset from a few days back. Don't remember which of the storms, but uh, yeah, that was just, look how great that is. That'd make a cool painting too. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect shot. And uh, maybe starting to see the glow of the morning sunrise. Won't be coming up for about uh, a little bit less than an hour when it officially heads up uh, and gets our side of the horizon. Yesterday afternoon, there were a couple of showers out there. Most of them stayed well north of the uh, the hill country. That was pretty much about it. And that's pretty much going to be about it today. Again, a few of them primarily here along the coastal plain. If anything, uh, that'll be about it. We'll have plenty of sunshine. That's really going to heat us up. Roughly the same situation tomorrow. Maybe uh, that much better chance to see a stray shower or two along the coastal plain. But rain is really not in the in the picture all that much over the next couple of days because that high pressure, which that's the one that really wasn't a dominant feature in throughout most of the summer, which is why temperatures did stay relatively cool this summer. But now it's pretty much kind of in control and it's going to be sitting virtually on top of us. So that helps to suppress any sort of showers trying to develop as it pushes down in the atmosphere that helps to heat us up. So we are going to be staying in the mid to upper 90s through the rest of the week and going into the long holiday weekend. And by Sunday, Monday, yeah, the center of that high is going to be off to the west a little bit more. So hopefully that would maybe open up a disturbance or allow perhaps a shower or two by the middle part of next week. But really, even through Monday, we're not seeing anything as far as any rain chances out there. Today, we are going to make it up to 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today all the way up to 97. Again, don't get excited about showers. One or two of them off to the east. That'll be pretty much about it. We stay in the upper 90s, which means a lot of, I mean, your backyard, you may well hit triple-digit temperatures in the next few days. Slightly lower humidity. That's one kind of positive note to take out of this heat that we are in right now, and that's going to be over the weekend. Dry air does heat up more easily, mm -hmm. so therefore high temperatures will go up a little bit. I mean, it's going to feel more comfortable in the shade, but uh, we'll be looking, I mean, a lot, like I said, a lot of folks are going to be flirting with triple digits mm -hmm. through the long Labor Day weekend. And well, I'll be looking for shade. And looking for shade <laughs> uh, or to cool off. I mean, Labor Day weekend, perfect time to hit the river or the lake, right? Yeah. Yep, lots of water, lots of uh, sunscreen shade, so. Thank sounds, you, Mike. Sounds like a plan. 620, about 79 degrees. And after the break, a new pest threatening crops and trees. The details next in your GMA First Look. Impressive handful you got there. How many you think you got? Let me count real quick. One goldfish, two goldfish, three goldfish, four goldfish, five goldfish. I'm going to let you count your goldfish. Go for the handful.
Selling a home is expensive and stressful. So we created our smart seller system to sell your home for top dollar and save you thousands in commissions. I was amazed in the fact that my house sold in one day. Ideal agents saved me in the neighborhood of twenty dollars to $25,000 in commission. The process was as easy as it gets. They are the number one way to sell your house. Our service is free, available nationwide, and there's zero obligation. Call us today or visit idealagent.com. Can you be free of hair breakage worries? We invited Maho to see for herself that new Dove Breakage Remedy gives damaged hair the strength it needs. Even with repeated combing, hair treated with Dove shows 97% less breakage. Strong hair with new Dove Breakage Remedy. In this morning's GMA First Look, move over, murder hornet, and say hello to the spotted lanternfly. If you see that, we want you to identify it and we want you to squish it. While they may look pretty, officials warn these pests are wreaking havoc on fruit crops, trees, and even lawn furniture up and down the East Coast. The quick-moving pests native to Asia and known for their pale pinkish-gray wings, black dots, and scarlet undercoat were first documented in Pennsylvania in 2014. While they aren't a threat to humans or pets, they feed off 70 types of plants and trees. In the four years since they first showed up at Vinecrest Vineyards and Winery in Pennsylvania, partner Sam Landis says they've caused hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. In terms of wine value, um, it's debilitating. So what should you do if you encounter a spotted lanternfly? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. And Morgan's Inclusion Initiative is looking for nominees for Morgan's Wonderland Wall of Fame. The Wall of Fame honors individuals who have gone above and beyond in doing great things for people with special needs. Names of the five honorees will be placed on the Morgan's Wonderland Wall of Fame located in the heart of the theme park for thousands of guests to see. Monday, September 13th is the nomination deadline. And you can submit nominations to inclusionstartshere.com or you can look for a link on our website at ksat.com. Now to a holiday weekend ransomware warning. The federal government warning companies to stay alert for cyber attacks over the long Labor Day holiday. Most recent major incidents took place leading into Mother's Day, Memorial Day, and the 4th of July. Spotify has rolled out Blend. It's a personalized playlist that allows friends to discover how their musical tastes overlap. After users' playlists are blended, personal lists can be made using the songs that appeal to both people. Spotify will also make recommendations based on your likings. That's right out of the old cartoon. Dick Tracy, Samsung has launched a new walkie-talkie app for some of its smartwatches. It allows push-to-talk conversations between two or more people wearing the Galaxy Watch 4 or the Watch 4 Classic. The walkie-talkie feature is similar to one Apple introduced for the Apple Watch in 2018. That'll come in handy. Time now, 625 and about 79 degrees. Ahead in our next half hour, raging out of control in the state of California. We're keeping an eye on the massive wildfire threatening so many homes and popular tourist destinations near Lake Tahoe. And back here at home, an overnight crash sends several people to the hospital. Just ahead, how investigators say it happened. Waiting for the sun to come up right now. We are looking at Transcat at 90 in Montgomery. We're going to check back in with Stephen Cavazos. And Mike has your full weather after the break. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta, live at the San Antonio Food Bank, where they're getting ready to ship out a second truck to Louisiana for those in need after Hurricane Ida. A family of three and another man in the hospital right now following a rollover crash on the city's northeast side. We've got details. And a U.S. Navy helicopter crashes off the California coast. Now, search and rescue efforts are underway for five missing people. We are now halfway through the work week, approaching a long Labor Day weekend and starting off the month of September. Very humid out there. Good morning. It's Wednesday, September 1st. Happy Wednesday. Happy September. We made it this far. Hope you're having a great week this so far. I was going to say it's been kind of hot. You know, during the week we had gotten used to a little more milder temperatures, but now we're dealing with heat. Mother Nature's been fairly kind this summer up until now, and it's kind of like a, a swift kick in the, uh, yeah. Reality. Yeah. Reality. Kind of yeah. thing. Swift kick in the thermometer. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It was a fill in the bank. It's like Mad Libs this morning, so everybody can participate, okay? <laughs> Good one. Uh, yeah, it's funny because now we're into a kind of a summer weather pattern. And by the way, meteorologically, this is the start of fall. 
September, October, November are the, the fall months, June, July, August, the summer months, but who, I mean, Mother Nature never looks at calendars, and of course, fall doesn't officially begin until the equinox on the, um, the 22nd of the month. Anyway, it's going to feel like summer. It does this morning. Wow. Yesterday, you know, it was kind of pleasant as far as humidity was concerned, but boy, humidity is definitely back uh, this morning because we've got these dew point temperatures, which are at 75 right now. It was about 70 at this point yesterday morning, which is more comfortable. Temperature stands at 80, wind out of the south at 9 miles per hour. And again, got to point out, this is the first day uh, that SAWS customers are back into stage one watering restrictions. It goes by the last digit of your address. You got to water before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. Handheld watering is allowed. So, yep, back into effect because the aquifer has been dropping down. Even though we've had some big, big rain events over the course of summer, and I haven't had a whole heck of a lot recently. Also, CPS Energy, it's a power saver day. If you can lower your energy usage, they ask that between 2 and 7 o'clock this afternoon. As far as uh, temperatures, we are going to be well up into the upper 90s the next couple of days, and it's just going to be staying hot all the way through the weekend, maybe a little lower humidity, so slight bit of a light at the end of the tunnel as far as the humidity is concerned. But as far as rain, a stray shower or two, and that's going to be about it. Details on the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Amy, it's been pretty quiet this morning. Yeah, you know, we're in, and now that it's 630, a little bit past 630. Uh, thankfully, no big issues to talk about right now, Mike. But let's go ahead and take a look at trans guys, see how things are shaping up here. Loop 410 at Jackson Keller getting a little bit busier now that more people are waking up, getting their day started, hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee before they head into work or maybe dropping off the kiddos. But thankfully, no issues that are going to cause any delays or headaches on the roads right now. But let's go ahead and take a look at the map because we do have a stall here still off Loop 16 to 4 eastbound at Valero Way. And what we're going to do now is just a little bit of bunny hopping is what I like to think. So we got a stall right here of I-10 westbound at Callahan Road. And jumping on over here, we do have a stall reported off Loop 1604 eastbound at I-10 that, that does have a lane closure out there because of these stalled vehicles. So make sure you check those cars before hitting the roadways now that it it is getting busier. We are seeing these stalls popping up in our system uh, and we're going to get to a few of them as of course the morning does pick up and see how things are going to be looking. But uh, now time for the inbound times. As you can see, it's still pretty green on the screen. Seeing a little bit of a slowdown there on 87 from Lavernia right now, but thankfully nothing too big that's going to cause any issues if you plan on traveling to the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments. But right now the roads here in town are looking pretty good smooth so far. We're watching things closely and keep your eyes on the road as well. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio Food Bank about to send out a second semi truck full of goods to Louisiana to help in the aftermath of Ida. Sarah Costa is live at the food bank as that truck is getting ready to head out this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we're actually inside the truck. This is the second truck that's going to be sent to Louisiana to Lafayette. And you can see it's almost full of supplies. They're going to be heading out in about, I don't know, like um, less than 30 minutes. Yeah. I'm here with Michael get it with the San Antonio Food Bank and you guys got the call Sunday, and it's from uh, what organization called you? So yeah, the, the Food Bank in New Orleans and the Food Bank in Baton Rouge combine up to make Feeding Louisiana. So it's their state association of food banks, and we've been talking to them and coordinating with them a little bit, you know, really for five days, really trying to understand what's in our warehouse and what are other food banks in the southern United States have that they could send. So from cleaning supplies, mops, swabs, uh, and then water and snack items, just those kind of things that people are going to need when they don't have electricity. And I'm sure some of our viewers might be wondering why Lafayette, Louisiana, not, you know, further into New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, getting in and letting FEMA and other responders do the work that they need to do with power lines and just making it safe for travel, super important. And the food distribution, if you think about it, it's not, you're not going to go to a, a store or to a food pantry to get the food. It'll be in parking lot distributions. So we're going to stage it close, and then as they have those big parking lots ready, like we've done in San Antonio during the pandemic, they'll be able to take the food from a staged area like Lafayette and then take it right into New Orleans, into the key spots in that area that have been affected. You think this is going to be, is the second truck being sent out, do you think will be more? Oh, it's, it's the second of many. We understand there may be no power for three weeks minimally, so yeah, we're getting this for the long haul. Thank you so much, Michael. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a late night three vehicle crash on the northeast side sends a family of three and another man to the hospital. Happened just before 10 p.m. at the intersection of Walsham Road and Mesquite Farm. San Antonio police say a man was traveling too fast, ran a red light, crashed right into a pickup truck with that family inside. 
Another car was also involved. No one was hurt in that vehicle. The three family members in the pickup suffered minor injuries. Police say the man who hit them is in serious condition and has a broken wrist. Turning now to the pandemic here at home, there is a slight decrease in hospitalizations. A little more than 1,300 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital this morning. 378 are in the intensive care unit and 237 are on ventilators. Bear County's COVID-19 positivity rate now dropping three points to 10.6%. And some warning indicators are moving in a positive direction, but Metro Health Director Claude Jacob says it's not the time to let our guard down. Let's be clear, there's still a brush fire out there and we wanna make sure that folks get vaccinated, that folks mask up, but really entering into a, another holiday. With Labor Day weekend coming, you're reminded to keep the safeguards and masking and vaccines in mind when invited to si uh, significantly large gatherings. Frustration inside the FDA as the push to ramp up vaccinations continues. The agency is addressing additional COVID-19 vaccine approvals, vaccines for kids younger than 12. U.S. health officials say they also want to have boosters available for everyone starting the week of September 20th, but the FDA has not given its authorization. According to one source, there's been some frustration inside the agency about the <coughs> excuse me, White House stepping in to the FDA's lane, so to speak and getting ahead of where this science is by setting booster goals. We have been also been very clear throughout that this is pending FDA conducting an independent evaluation and CDC's panel of outside experts issuing a booster dose recommendation. In the meantime, the workload is immense and morale has suffered. Two senior leaders in the vaccine review office have decided to step down. Five people missing after a U.S. Navy helicopter crashed off the San Diego coast yesterday. Search and rescue crews from the Coast Guard and Navy worked through the night to try to find them. Navy says the chopper crashed into the ocean while it was doing routine flight operations. Six people were on board, but only one has been found so far. No word on how that person is doing. President Joe Biden defending the way the U.S. ended its 20-year war in Afghanistan. Hundreds of thousands of Afghans and Americans were airlifted out of the country. More than 100 Americans and thousands of Afghans were left behind. But President Biden says other efforts would continue in order to get them out. Biden also said, quote, I was not going to extend this forever war and I was not going to extend a forever exit, end quote. Now to the wildfire emergency in California. Flames described being as 100 feet tall are now just miles from Lake Tahoe. The Caldor Fire is over 300 square miles and now threatening popular tourist spots in the area. Almost 500 homes have been destroyed so far. ABC's Christine Sloan with the latest. This morning, mandatory evacuation orders around Lake Tahoe are expanding as a massive wildfire approaches the world famous resort area. As if Tuesday night, the Calder fire was only three miles from the hotels and casinos in South Lake Tahoe, and the flames show no signs of slowing down. One firefighter saying he never expected this area to be threatened by a wildfire. The erratic winds, the terrain, the dry weather, it's just done stuff I've never would have ever believed would have happened. Overnight, the Calder fire was only 18% contained, already burning 200,000 acres, along with nearly 500 homes. 34,000 buildings now threatened. On Tuesday, tens of thousands of people evacuated. There is only one way out of town, Highway 50, and it's a parking lot out there. The flames blazing a trail of destruction through nearby communities. ABC's Kena Whitworth. We're just a few yards away here from an entire neighborhood in Christmas Valley that's being threatened right now. And now wildlife is being pushed from the mountains. This bear was spotted looking for food in a deserted South Lake Tahoe. Officials say nearly everyone has evacuated South Lake Tahoe. Only a handful of residents have defied the evacuation order. Christine Sloan, ABC News. Here at home, San Antonio is entering stage one water restrictions. First time it's happened since May. That means outdoor watering with a sprinkler irrigation system is limited to before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. one day a week starting today. Your day, of course, is based on the last number in your street address. Stage one restrictions will remain in effect till the aquifer is above the trigger level for 15 consecutive days. All this info is on KSAT.com. 
happening today. We will be hosting a case at Community Town Hall discussing food insecurity in Bear County. Max Massey and Sarah Costa will be joined by the CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper, and other experts on nutrition and health. If you have any questions for panelists, you can submit them right now at KSAT.com. Again, our Feeding Tomorrow Town Hall is today at 2 p.m. It's 641, about 79 degrees. A local artist is taking her talents from the windows to the walls. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll introduce you to one of San Antonio's up and coming muralists. That's coming up. A local artist is hoping to use windows to open a door to her future success. She mainly paints decorations on windows right now, but she has her eyes on walls all over town, sites for the murals she wants to create. This week's episode of If These Walls Could Talk, Katrina Weber introduces us to this artist who is out to make her mark in a big way. No matter what message she's painting, Catalina Zamaripa hopes all the letters she handcrafts soon will spell success. Windows is great money, but I want to pursue uh, something a little bigger for myself. Actually, she dreams of something a lot bigger, painting murals like the ones she sees all over town. Right now, most of her work greets customers as they enter local businesses. It's a way that she came up with to continue refining the skills she learned at the Maryland Institute College of the Arts. I graduated um, right at the cuff of the pandemic when it first started, uh, so I was exiled back home. Exile has turned to excitement now. Samaripa can't wait to head back down the path that she actually started taking as a child. She would help her uncle as he painted murals across the city. Painting a mural is you can't scrape it off. <laughs> if you mess up, you got to paint over it. With the window, you can just scoop with a little razor. Recently, she got a chance to try her hand at a couple of murals on her own. Unlike other artists, she paints the old fashioned way with a paintbrush and a vision. While most of her time and talent so far has been spent on windows, Samaripa already can see through this to a time where her work and name will be on walls everywhere. I know that I'm in a city that will provide me work and um, will support me in everything that I do. She's definitely keeping the window open to opportunity. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Very cool. And let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos as things pick up on the roadways. Yeah, really cool stuff uh, from Katrina and Tim. Uh, yeah, getting really busy out here off I-35 from the shot at Trans Guide. It does look like traffic is slowing down. They're going to jump right here to show you uh, that traffic looks like it is coming to a minor halt right there, which is reflected here on the map. As you can see here on those northbound lanes of 35 at Main, traffic right now moving at just 29 miles per hour. We're not even really in rush hour traffic, uh, but we are seeing that slowdown. So just something to be uh, in the lookout for and we'll watch out what's going on over there as well. We still have a few stalls to talk about here. Loop 16 to 4 eastbound of Valero Way is also reported there. We are seeing a slowdown there also in those eastbound lanes. And as we jump over to another stall here of I-10 westbound at Callahan Road, that's also leading to a closure. And we're going to jump on over to this one still reported here off 16 to 4 eastbound at I-10. Mike, that's lane is still blocked out there. So overall, yeah, we got one more to talk about. I forgot about it. I-35 northbound stalled vehicle at US 90 exit 572. It's been a morning of stalls. Just a quick reminder. Before we jump to Mike with the forecast, the Texas Hero program does provide add gasoline services, perform minor vehicle repairs, and jump starts vehicles on the highways. They also provide drinking water and cell phone services to stranded motorists or number 210732 Hero. Keep in mind you must be stranded on a highway to receive that assistance. Mike, it has been a morning of stalls. And a morning of a lot of humidity as well. It's a lot higher than what it was at this time yesterday. Great picture. I love that with the hummingbirds right there and the sun setting in the background. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, got our clouds hanging around here this morning and a lot of humidity. Yesterday we did hit 98. That's the fifth time we've hit it this year. We had that uh, four days in a row earlier in the month and then to finish off August. Yeah, it seemed it's kind of fitting that you know all month or all summer long almost we were staying on the relatively coolish side. Now the heat is back. Even Pleasanton Honda were both the triple digits yesterday. And we're going to be right up in that ballpark again today, mid and upper 90s around here. Uh, it will feel like the low hundreds, 106 Pleasanton is going to be the heat index, 105 in Gonzales. And it's just really, when you get those heat index readings up around 105 or even higher than that, it's really tough to uh, kind of cool your body down. Also, Got to emphasize all those numbers are in the shade. So if you're in the direct sun, it feels even hotter than that. The sun's heating you up. You're just not feeling the air temperature. All right, as far as rain chances today, pretty much nil. I mean, maybe something along the coastal plain. Um, 
tomorrow, same situation, perhaps one or two of them Friday down there along the coast. But rain is not going to be a huge issue going into the weekend. So if you do have outdoor plans this weekend, it's going to be fantastic, but it is definitely going to be a scorcher. All right, we do have Tropical Storm Larry over here by the uh, Cape Verde Islands off the coast of Africa. And then, of course, Kate is still brewing out here, just kind of sitting around in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Both of those are forecast to kind of take a, a turn up to the north. Then the Hurricane Center is just keep an eye on things down here in the Caribbean. It says perhaps uh, a very low chance in the next five days something may develop there, but you know, as long as the Caribbean, it's close enough to where we got to keep a close eye on it. So just in case. But again, that's the only thing that is brewing right now that the uh, Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on other than those two storms out in the middle of the Atlantic. 90 partly cloudy skies today at noon. You had 97 high temperature, mostly sunny. Got a mention of a shower off to the east, but not a very, very good chance at rain at all. Of course, the heat index is going to be well up into the, the low hundreds. Same thing tomorrow, uh, Friday, 97 degrees, and we will get a bit lower humidity coming in here by the weekend. So that'll be kind of a plus side. It's going to be more comfortable if you are in the shade and we'll have slightly lower low temperatures then. But of course, dry air doesn't take as much to heat that up. So temperatures, thermometer readings are going to be slightly higher and we're going to be pushing. A lot of folks are going to be seeing some triple digits or thereabouts. And of course, it's going to feel like it the next couple of days. Well, lower humidity that does help just about everybody. Yeah, a yeah. little bit lower is going to be more comfortable. Yeah, especially in this shade, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks, Mike. 650, about 79 degrees. And did you know that September is Child Cancer Awareness Month? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to introduce you to a local nonprofit that aims to bring joy to pediatric cancer patients. Outside with live cam, another look at traffic coming up. The sun is up over South Texas on this September 1st, 2021. We'll be back. Good morning. The rain coming down here in the New York City area. Coming up on GMA, we've got more on President Biden defending his decision to withdraw from Afghanistan, ending our longest war. This morning, more on the president's vow to get the remaining Americans out if they want to leave. That much more. Remnants of Ida coming up right here on GMA. We'll see you soon. We are approaching five minutes till seven. Go ahead and take one last look at traffic with Stephen Cavazos. Still very busy out there, Mark and stuff. As you can see from TransGuy, traffic's not moving very fast here at I-35 southbound at Maine. As we take a closer look, it does appear that it's coming almost to a stop right now. And as we look at the map right now, you can see that the traffic right now is moving at 60 miles per hour. Uh, not sure exactly what's going on that's leading to that slowdown, but we do have some stalls out there at 535 northbound. Stall vehicle at US 90, exit 572, not too far from where we're seeing that slowdown, Mike. And a stall still reported here that's losing to a lane block at loop 16 4 eastbound at I-10. Although we're seeing those slowdowns around town, the inbound times are looking pretty good. Minor slowdown there in Lavernia from 24 minutes right now, but we're watching this pretty closely. Uh, it does appear again that traffic is slowing down out there, as you can see from this shot at TransGuide. Just be sure to take it easy out on the roadways, and as always, we're watching it closely, and you should too. Let's head over to Mike with the forecast. Don't need your sunglasses necessarily this morning, but you will today. Lots of clouds hanging around here. The humidity it's up there. Still feels like 89 at Stinson, 83 out at the airport. 85 is the heat index at Canyon Lake. 90 at noon, 97 for a high temperature today. It will feel like the hundreds out there. Definitely take it easy. One or two showers off to the east. It's almost not even worth a mention. Uh, it's still going to be very, very hot the next couple of days and probably getting hotter over the weekend, but a slight drop in the humidity once we go into the weekend. And other than a stray shower here or there, there's no rain chances really in the next mm. six, seven days. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Go out there and make it a great Wednesday. Yeah, we'll see you back here at nine. Have a great day. Good morning. America is next.